This tutorial is sponsored by the 3D Coloring Book, a project specifically designed to help empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to help show you that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. To instantly gain access to hundreds of pre-made professional level models and hours of high quality tutorials, click the link in the description and begin your journey today. Hello, Stylized Station. I am Igor G. I am a VFX artist for games in Brazil, and I'll show you how I made this fire tornado VFX and how I turned it into a frozen tornado. I'll share all my thoughts when I was creating these stylized VFX. I'll show you how I did the modeling, the shader, the texturing, and the animation. So let's go. First of all, it's important to find some references. If you go to Google and search for a stylized tornado VFX or something like that, you will find a lot of nice looking tornadoes. You can understand better how the shapes of a tornado are, how they behave, and it will be easier to, to create your shape. So let's go to modeling part. So I'll do the modeling Maya, but you can use any 3D modeling software you like, like Blender or 3D Studio Max. Uh, so let's go, I'll start with a cylinder, I want to remove this upper and this bottom faces, so I'll select everything, deselect the middle faces and hit delete, so ok, nice. Uh, there's one thing that is super important, let's go to UV, UV editor, I'll select my UV shell, modify and normalize. Why I did this? Because our texture is gonna scroll around our UVs from up from bottom to up from left to right and we don't want any strange uh, cuts on our textures because of your RVs so let's keep it this way okay so let's head back to the modeling part uh, I'm gonna select my upper vertices and okay I will select edge control right mouse button edge ring utilities and to edge ring and split so our mesh is split right in the middle I'll do a press G to repeat this action sometimes and keep our mesh more subdivided okay so now I uh, we can so let's try to create uh, a tornado shape but or maybe a uh, wormhole shape for for the beginning okay
So, I created the scene and uh, some post processing. It's important to have bloom on your scene so you can make your brighter colors glow. Okay, so I imported our, our shape, our model here and created some materials and apply it to our meshes. I will explain about the shader but first let me explain about these four layers. So the first one is the base with a lot of brighter colors and the movement. So then I added this black layer. I like to add a lot of black in my VFX because it creates some nice contrast. So in the middle of the tornado I added this the other layer of bright colors and then a large uh, a large layer of rags spinning around our tornado okay so each one has its own material and so let's go to the shader so I did the shader with this tool that is called amplify shader editor but you can do exactly the same effect exactly the, sh the same shader with shader graph shader forge it's important just to understand the logic behind it so you can even code your shader and but okay let me explain everything i did here uh, one thing that, that i like to, to say is that this effect was just for showcase i won't put in a game so there's some things that is not optimized for a game but the work for for a showcase okay so let's go so i'll start explaining the emissive part first of all i needed uh, an emissive for the fire state and one for the ice state let's start with the fire state first of all i created this texture node and added this panel node so I don't want it to be static I want our texture scrolling around our V's spinning around our mesh so I did this first and then I did this little tricky using step node setting some values here and here I create this interval of values and multiply by some colors and added one to another so from a smoothy texture, I create this more hard added texture. Uh, when working with stylized art, I prefer using more hard adds for colors, shadows, and lighting. So I did this tricky. Okay. For the frozen part, uh, it's more basic. It's just a texture with a banner multiplied by a color. Okay. So this frozen level part is pretty important because here's where I control what is frozen and what is not. So I created this float value that goes from 0 to 1. 0 to 1 is a base interval so it's easier to control. I added this ice level offset because I don't want our ice growing so straight. I want some offset, some noisy where the, the ice is growing. And then I use this step with this word position divided by the height. So everything that is below the percent of this position in Y axis gonna be frozen. And everything that is above this percent of this position is gonna be not frozen. Okay, so then I use this step to create exactly that same effect I did in, in, in the emissive part to be more hard to add than the smooth. And then here are freeze value. I'll expl explain this frozen border later, okay? So, what about the opacity mask? I created this this texture node with a panner and multiplied by a, the opacity speed or opacity panning speed just that I multiply the speed by this freeze 
that is this frozen level value then we will tell to our shader where I want to have this this speed and where I don't want this speed because where it's frozen the opacity mask doesn't need to move okay so then I multiply it by opacity multiplier that is a global opacity multiplier and by our vertex color because I use this shader for particles too and particles use vertex color okay <coughs> So it's a fire tornado, so I want it to have some displacement too. I want to distort our mesh. So okay, basically a texture node with a panner, and the same trick I did on the, the opacity mask that I multiply our, our our panning speed by our freezy level, and then I I multiply the this this texture by. Uh, another texture that is our intensity uh, you could use another texture or like like really noisy texture or, or a gradient to tell where do you want to have more displacement and where you want less displacement multiplied by vertex normal so the, the displacement will happen in the direction of our vertex normal and a multiplier so I wanted to displacing a lot or not and multiply everything and here our displacement value okay and about the the opacity I use this trick to create a gradient and this is the the opacity for the the fire stage and for the frozen state I use the ice ice albedo multiply it by this gradient and uh, then lerp it with using this freezer level uh, as alpha okay so this is the opacity about the texturing I have to say that I am a lazy texture but there's some things uh, I, I have to say uh, first of all you can use a random noise you can can get uh, a nice effect using a random noise, but if you want to paint your own texture, uh, let let me show you how how I did. Uh, first of all, I just painted some diagonal lines here, and I used two filters to achieve this these values and the shapes. So you can go to my Photoshop is in Portuguese, but I'll translate for you. Filters and um, blur and movement blur. And then you can select a, an angle for your blur direction and a distance. So okay, then now your your texture is blurred uh, in, in the direction you selected. And the second trick you can go to filters, others, and offset. Then you can put a value like the half of your texture size, and your texture gonna scroll for 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 the left. And then you can remove the scenes. You can paint it over and remove the scenes, so you won't have strange cuts in your texture. And it's important for you to do the same in the y-axis and remove the y-axis seems true. Okay. So for the texturing, that's it. Okay. Let's finish our shader. So then I put our reflection value to reflection, opacity to opacity, opacity mask to opacity mask and displacement to local vertex offset Ju it's just a little different for albedo and the emission so I have my ice albedo, my fire albedo and create a lerp using the, the frozen level value as alpha multiplied everything by our vertex color like I said I use this for particles too and particles use vertex color and then here it is our albedo and added uh, a freezy the freezy border value just for the emission okay so here's our shader let's go back to the unity and then back to unity i created a lot of materials and set them to each part this first one uses uh, a lot of displacement and full opacity the second the second one there's no color and 
uses less opacity this one is is just a copy of th this one but with color and this one is a large mesh with less opacity in each shader I can control the frozen level and then I merge it then in one and tada so you can control the frozen level here a four of them together I created some particle system too so here for the top of the tornado I spawn a lot of these ring meshes and for the ground I spawn some of this ring and some of this ring so let me split them so you can see each part better so here they are and then I added some sparkles going around the tornado and this string particle system that just spawned this, this, this string that animated going up with the, the frozen level so then you have just to animate the frozen level of all of your materials going up and then you have your frozen tornado so that's it thank you for watching and goodbye see you soon